Hey everybody, it's Hawk here, um, and I'm talking about a fairly different topic today. Uh, I started thinking about this when uh, Skull did his video about how to slaughter giant tentacle monsters. And yeah, like all of you, I had a, I had a nice good laugh about uh, all the tentacle porn jokes that we could come up with because there were so many. Uh, and then I started thinking, because you know, he's going, oh, have a happy October, and I went, oh yeah, it's Halloween. Maybe I should do a, a spooky video. And I thought about it, and I couldn't just find one that I was happy with. But then I kind of went down the, the whole horror thought train, like I, I so often do. I happen to love horror. I love running dark fantasy games. It's a thing. You, most of my players know this. I really do like running um, this, you know, dark fantasy. Like Witcher, or I don't want to go full Berserk, but kind of over there. Uh, and then I, a couple days ago, I watched the first episode currently the only episode, of an anime called Goblin Slayer. It has a rather innocuous name, but it's pretty dark. Okay, it, you know, I'm, I'm just going to tell you right now, there will be spoilers for Goblin Slayer from here on in. I'm not going to say spoiler every time it happens, but from here on in, I'm going to spoil the crap out of that episode. Uh, I don't know the rest of the series, so that's safe, but if you want to watch that first episode without being spoiled, you can leave, go watch it. If you don't want to watch that, or care about it, whatever, uh, hang out here. Goblin Slayer starts off like your fairly standard anime adventure story. You know, it's they're, they're following a priestess, she's a porcelain class um, adventurer, because the Japanese in their anime really like having ranks for their heroes, which is fine, they just generally use metals. Perfectly fine ranking system, I've, I don't have any issue with it. I generally prefer rank, rank names, but that's me. So, we follow Priestess. She does not have a name. She is Priestess. Uh, she then goes and meets a warrior, a monk. I'm to God. There is a monk in there. I, I do like that. It was very nice. And then there was a mage of some description. An arcane caster. I don't know exactly what she was. Probably wizard is my bet, but there's plenty of other mages that can taught spellcasting too. Uh, she shot a fireball. Or a fire bolt. That's all I know. So what they're doing is, their first quest is, we're going to go kill goblins. Right? You know what? That's about as standard adventure as you get. Um, the only way it gets more standard is if you go kill rats in the basement, as the joke goes. So they go there. They, they, the goblins have uh, kidnapped girls from a village. They stole a bunch of livestock. They've, they've just been running amok. The goblins are horrible. So they go in there. They're walking in there. They've got their torches. Terrible idea of torches, but they have torches. So they're in there, and, and they're going, okay? <laughs> Things go kind of badly, pretty much from word go. They, they get in there fine. I'm not sure how far into the war in they're in, but they're in far enough where they get ambushed from behind. This gets elaborated on how that happened later, but they get ganked from behind. The mage firebolts a goblin, goblin dies, the problem is, the remaining, like, four or five goblins start grappling her. They take away her stick, she can't cast, they rip her glasses off, they grab her muscle to the ground, they take a knife, and, quite specifically, stab her in the stomach. She's laying on the ground right here. She has, she's a mage, so she's not wearing armor, whatever. Again, it's basically... It's basically D&D, alright? It's effectively a D&D game, and the players are gods, and this is their story. I'm not joking, that is more or less from my understanding of what Goblin Slayer is. It's fascinating, though. So, that happened. She's been stabbed. She's also been poisoned. Now, we don't find that out immediately. Uh, the, the, the priestess tries to heal her, it doesn't work. That would be the poison. It's really, really bad. Find that out in a bit. But the, the warrior comes running up. He's wielding a... a uh, I'm not sure if it'd be a full-on longsword, honestly. It's too long to be an arming sword, I would say. And it has a, a two-handed grip on it. But it doesn't seem quite long enough to be a full longsword. It might be a, just a short longsword. Uh, I guess an actual one, not the D&D kind. And he's sitting there swinging it around. He's hacking goblins. It's pretty well, actually. The thing is, and this was foreshadowed earlier when he was swinging it around, the cave is too small to facilitate a sword of this length. So when he swings down like this, it hits a chunk of the ceiling right up here. Like, I have a spear. Same. That's what happened. But he's so flustered, he's not working with the monk who can just, you know, kick the crap out of everything in there because she has no, uh, 
no real restrictions on her movement, but he swings that sword, it connects with the top, and he disarms himself. And then six goblins just dog pile him. He is downed immediately, and they just... It's brutal. It's this horrific... I, I gotta admit, the animators, just bravo on that one. This is partially a review of the episode, just because I'm gonna keep doing that. But just bravo to them. It was just horrible. But they never actually directly show you. The only thing you see is when one of them takes a hatchet to his hand. You kind of see that, and then it kind of flashes back to just them doing this. And they're like partial silhouettes. It's just, it's just horrendous. And you're, your own brain's filling in what they're doing to him. And it's just awful. Alright, then the monk, she's just livid. She yells at the priestess to grab the mage and run. And then she just starts kicking the crap out of goblins. She does okay. Until a hobgoblin shows up. Now, this is an anime hobgoblin, so it's not really a 3.5 hobgoblin. Uh, while it doesn't look like a 3.5 bugbear, I would say it fills a similar design space. It's big, it's beefy, it's really it's stupidly muscular, and it beats the ever-living crap out of her. It honestly just grabs her leg when she tries to kick it, and I think dislocates her knee. Uh, and it just grabs her leg and just really screws her leg up, and then slams her into the wall with her leg. And she's partially conscious. Okay, now, you might be wondering why I had a warning at the beginning of this video. This part right here is where we start getting into the, 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 the mature nasty stuff. So, if you watched this, I'm going to warn you. If you know anything about Berserk, I'm talking about that level stuff. Okay, there, there will be, I will be talking about rape, about uh, horrible torture, th things like that. That's pretty... High up stuff. I'm giving you a final warning from here on in. I'm talking about that casually. Alright? Not like in a statistical way, as in a... You're... The shit you're gonna see. And forgive my language, but that's what's gonna happen here, okay? I want you to fully understand that. I'm not usually big on disclaimers, but this is a pretty massive tone shift for my channel. I just kind of want everyone to be cognizant of this and make your decision with good information. So from there on in, uh, now the light novel apparently of uh, Goblin Slayer was a little more vague on what happened. Uh, the manga was not. They held her down, ripped her clothes off, and she was poisoned, and then she, it's implied she's raped. That's, she, it's implied very heavily that she is gang raped. The anime, of course, doesn't show anything because it's an anime, but they, it's pretty implications pretty overt without actually showing anything. And honestly, again, they're trying to, the, the creators are trying to horrify me. Nailed it. You guys nailed it. I was watching that, my brain was filling everything in, and I'm like, oh, that's, so oh God, that's what's happening now. So that just happened. Which made the karmic retribution that came in about two minutes absolutely fantastic. So that was good. From there on in, the priestess is now trying to carry out the still unbeknownst to her poisoned teammate, and she gets shot in the shoulder and she just falls over. She's not dead, she's just hurt. Uh, she can't really move. And then the goblins, the two that are there, they're gonna try to go rape the poor paralyzed wizard now. Yeah, that's, that's happening. And then Goblin Slayer shows up. This is the name of the titular character of the anime uh, slash manga slash light novel. I'm going to describe him in one sentence. Doom guy's more talkative younger brother. That's who he is. He's angry, he hates goblins, and he's gonna murder the crap out of them. And boy does he murder the crap out of them. It was for, car for, for catharsis, it was great. So he murders the crap out of them. Saves priestess, she's okay. She, she's not hurt. The wizard is, wizardess, is not raped. However, uh, he's talking to the priestess, he hands her a healing potion, says, drink this, it will dull the pain. She talks so well, you can save her, and he looks over and goes, no, she can't. Uh, if I had been here maybe a little bit earlier, maybe the antidote would have worked, but right now, anything I gave her is just going to prolong her agony. She's slowly dying. In D&D terms, she's probably ingested a poison that is not only a paralytic, but probably some sort of con drain, or yeah, drain, drain would be permanent damage, which is probably why they can't fix it. it. She's going to die, and it's going to be excruciatingly painful. So he kills her, out of mercy. 
did your mor let your own moral compass decide if that was the right decision or not, but that is what he does because he's sitting in there and he's like, I can't do anything to help you. You're going to hurt us if I try to do anything, and I'm going to hurt you more if I try to do anything. So in his own moral compass, he went, all right, I'm just going to kill you and make this quick. And he does. Priestess is, of course, horrified, but he's there to help her. She's willing to go help him. They then go through the dungeon, absolutely slaughtering the utter living crap out of all the goblins. Once again, beautiful karma. Uh, made me very, very happy. It was also absolutely uh, metal as hell. And honestly, as an anime, it's fantastic. Now, continuing down this, he does some pretty nasty things. He actually, uh, spoiler again, special spoiler, I'm putting that in there. He kills a bunch of goblin children because he says they will, they're going to learn from the mistakes of their parents and they will hold a grudge for the rest of their life and they're just going to do this again. And that's where the episode ends. And it ends with a bit of uh, Priestess having introspective, uh, introspection of, is this normal? This is said this happens a lot and it's, it's terrible. Now you're going, okay, Hawk, what the hell was all that about? This isn't what the video said. You said the video about why being an adventurer would suck. I just gave you an example of why being an adventurer sucks. Straight up, I just gave you an example of why being an adventurer sucks. That happens. Okay, that happens with an alarming frequency, okay? <laughs> let's, let's be blunt here. You're an adventurer. This is what generally is sold to you as a high-risk, high-reward job, right? Well, job. You're a freelancer. You, you go and generally work as mercenaries, you'll be a caravan guard, you'll do all sorts of random stuff, right? Then you'll go into dungeons and you'll kill things and you'll get money. I'm gonna be honest here, I honestly don't know how much money adventurers on average would actually get because let's remember, your adventurers when you're playing D&D or similar other games, you're kind of the exemption, you're the main characters in the plot, so you get some sort of plot armor and you get some sort of plot reward, as it were, you, you generally get things for doing what you do. Honestly, I'm gonna go slaughter some some goblins. Okay, well, I, got, I did that. They stole people's cows. Well, how much crap do the goblins actually have? Just, let's exempt all the horrificness that happened to those people. Let's just say it's it's normal. I, I just walk in, I just, I, you know, me and my teammates, we're, we're, well, we're a well-oiled fighting machine. We know what we're doing. We, we practice a lot together. And we just go in there and we, we can kill them all. How much crap do they honestly have? Most of your pay isn't coming from the loot you get, it's coming from you getting paid to retrieve the, the goats or the cows or what have you. It's not a ton of money. And it's a pretty risky job, actually. Okay, you are effectively a soldier. Actually, you're worse than a soldier, you're a mercenary. That's what you are, you are a mercenary. This is, mercenaries now got paid pretty well uh, in the later stages of the, I'd say, late medieval period, early renaissance, that kind of, but basically when uh, mercenaries thrived, um, I'm not even going to try to put a year to it because I can't remember. But when they thrived, they got paid fairly well for what they did, which was good on them. That's kind of the exemption, right? You hear the stories about the mercenary guy who, who basically becomes a, no, uh, a noble in all but name. He owns a castle. He has people sworn to him. He has a small force at his beck and call. He has sworn allegiance to someone else. He, all, all that wonderful stuff. That's not the norm. The norm is, and I'm going to have some spoilers for the Sunless Citadel module in D&D, &D, if anyone cares at this point, it's almost 20 years old, uh, it's a module I love, but what happens is, is you, the party, are tasked with going and finding um, an adventuring party that has gone missing in the Sunless Citadel. It's not actually supposed to be super dangerous down there. It's just a castle that sunk into a ravine, because the whole ground collapsed underneath it and it fell down there, but still kind of intact, I'm assuming magic was involved in keeping it semi-preserved, or just dumb luck, and they go down there and you're just supposed to go find what happened to them. Are they dead? Are they just missing? Were they hurt? What happened? You get down there and it's pretty bad, actually. Um, if I remember correctly, the rogue died falling into... their, their parties, the party you're trying to find, their rogue died by falling into... I want to say a pit trap when he was running from something. I, I can't remember offhand for him. Uh, he died and was killed by, I believe, a dire, dire rat. No, he wasn't killed by a dire rat. The ranger was killed by a dire rat. They got attacked by goblins later on in the dungeon. And he got attacked and ran off because they were they were losing, so they all kind of retreated. And he was the more successful one. Because what happened to him is he ran off, was healing, and then he got attacked by a pack of dire rats. That's pretty horrifying considering a dire rat's about... That by about... That, I mean, a skeever from Skyrim. 
Okay. That's pretty big. And that's actually rather horrifying if you think about it, because basically take a possum and triple its size. And then make it angry. That's what a dire rat is. That's terrifying, okay? I don't know about you, but I don't want to fight something the size of a dog and it looks mangy and wants me to die. Just gonna be honest here. That, that seems like a fairly uh, crappy thing to have to deal with. Not the worst thing, obviously. I mean, goblins are bad enough. These aren't Goblin Slayer goblins or D&D goblins, but they're not much better. They're not as rapey, but they're gonna torture you and other horrible crap. It's not good. It, it's bad. Well, I don't know what happened to their cleric. Their cleric um, was a gnome. Actually, I don't think the party had a rogue. Maybe they did. I can't remember offhand. It, it's He's dead, too, is the point I'm getting at. The cleric, who's a gnome, and the goblins hated him, because they're like, oh, fuck you, you're a gnome. I don't like you. Um, again, language, I'm not... This is not going to be clean. He has been captive, or kept captive, by the goblins for a month or so, depending on how long it takes you to get there and whatnot, so it's a couple weeks to a month or ish. Uh, he's been kept captive in a room where they do not feed him and they do not give him water. Occasionally they feed him. He's been keeping himself alive. He's literally in a cage. Like he's in a giant bird cage. Quite literally. He's in a gibbet that's barely big enough for him to move in. And he's been keeping himself alive by using his create water can uh, orison because he's a cleric, not a not an arcane caster. Do you remember that? And uh, occasionally snatching rats that move by and then saving any food they give him so he can make sure he has food. That's what he's been doing for three weeks. That's terrible. And I haven't even gotten to the paladin and their wizard. Who, by the way, got captured by the goblins and then given to the evil druid that lives underneath the castle. Who has, by the way, been messing around with a tree that has grown out of a stake that was used to kill a vampire and making what are called twig blights. They're nasty little tree things about that big. They want to kill people. They're jerks, okay? They're just dickbags. That's pretty much their reason. They kill people, use them for fertilizer and whatnot, and grow more of themselves. It's what they do, okay? They're bad. Now, all that being done, they were taken down there. They were then put into a hollow inside the tree, and they are basically dead. Except they're not dead. They're they're turned into plant zombies, effectively. They're they're pseudo barkish. They've got they're mind controlled or not mind controlled. They, they they obey the druid, and they're unsavable. Now you can probably drop miracle and fix that, but this is a one to three level one to three adventure for people. You don't have that power, okay? And anyone who has that power isn't going to save them because you don't have the money. Because frankly, miracle is expensive. So is Wish, for that matter. That kind of magic is really expensive, and it's hard to do. And it's not even them being jerks. They need to blow... If I remember right, they have to blow a diamond for that. And XP. Okay? That's them spending part of their soul power to do that for you. I believe they are entitled to some compensation for that. But even if they were nice... It, it, what happened to them? They, they were mindless slaves for how many months? Or mindless-ish. They, they have mental stats. They're just horribly corrupted. I imagine it's similar to vampirism. You're not really you. You're a horrible, corrupted version of you. That's what happened. This is what happened to an adventuring party. Now, you could say, well, Hawk, that's not the average adventuring party. Really? Let's think about this. How many times in D&D, or any real adventuring game, do you have to go to uh, find, you know, you go find adventurers? that have died or gone missing or something. I'd say it's reasonably frequent. Mixing all this in there, you then get, let's go with Skyrim as example. Skyrim's not even like super dark. It's slightly dark. I wouldn't say it's like horrifically dark. There's some aspects of it that are pretty nasty, but I would say it's all fairly normal, real world darkness levels. Nothing massively, horribly evil, generally. How many dead adventurers do you find in dungeons? I'd say they're reasonably frequent. Um, here, I, I can even use Fallout as an example. Yes, Fallout's not fantasy, but it, it's the similar concept. It's fantasy with guns, basically, in a post-apocalyptic setting. So, you've done that, and how many dead prospectors do you find? How many dead scavengers do you find? How many dead adventurers, actually, I believe, stated adventurers, do you find? You find a lot of them, okay? All right, so you find a lot of them dead. Now, you're the courier, or you're the lone wanderer, or you're the sole survivor, so you are plot-shielded. 
your plot rewarded. You get all sorts of things for being the main character. It's to keep your attention. If this was actual reality, you wouldn't be getting any of those things, okay? You'd be getting whatever's on them. And they wouldn't be keeping the legendary plasma whatever. I will say that's points to fall out. They're actually using those weapons generally, so points to them. Um, they'd be using them to try to kill you. Well, in the case of Fallout, they do. Is Skyrim, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It's a little wiggity. The point being, there's a lot of dead people. You're not dead because you're amazing. You are the main character. You're important. If this is realistic, you are not important. Sorry. I mean, cosmically, okay? You're important to people, but you're important to people because of interconnections, not the gods are going to sit there and actually protect you for various reasons. Now, I'm going to... This has been a long rambling rant, but to keep this going, because I'm getting to a point here, I honestly expect adventurers, the ones that actually go adventuring and do these sorts of things, to have PTSD or to have chemical dependencies. I'm expecting them to drink heavily in, in uh, imbibe large quantities of drugs, uh, whatever the fantasy drugs happen to be, um, or to turn to religion. Uh, religion's probably a big one. You know, it gives them comfort. And this is where it's going to slightly change because we're not entirely certain how PTSD affected people in the ancient world. Now, I see no reason why PTSD wouldn't clearly exist because they have similar psychology to we do, to us. So we get PTSD, I would assume they get PTSD. The difference is PTSD, or shell shock, as it was called, came about to... I don't want to say public knowledge, but it came more to the fore because of World War I. Also, I'd say to an extent, if you uh, read some of the journals or some of the writings of the men who survived the uh, Civil War or the Crimean War, sort of that turn of the middle 1800s, like the 1860s onwards, anything in that kind of area war-wise, it starts, especially when they're against other industrialized nations is, is sort of when you start seeing it because it gets kind of bad it's particularly bloody it's particularly horrid um so once that's kind of there it's when you sort of start seeing it cropping but the the mentality of society had, hadn't changed so it was still kind of okay it's, oh you want off to war and kill people that's fine you know people aren't yelling at you yet world war ii is kind of, it, it's a big chunk of that. World War I showed us war sucks. That's where everybody kind of changed the mentality of it. War sucks. Always did, but now we really know it sucks. And, you know, the whole dying thing kind of changed. Whereas back in the medieval period, oh, well, they're kind of confirmed with death all the time. But I changed cameras when I died. Because I went on a really long rant. Um, as I was saying, it, in the medieval era, you die by getting stabbed, shot, burned. So, you know, they, they're not related to death because of all the other way they die, you know, starvation, disease, el the elements, honestly. I mean, the amount of people who died because of hypothermia during these time periods is kind of insane it, compared to other ways, especially in the modern era. Getting into some more stuff, it's... In, in a fantasy world... There are so many ways to die horrifically. It, it's actually a joke at this. It's a meme at this point, okay? The, the amount of horrible ways you can die in a fantasy universe. I'm just going to use an example from the D&D book, just randomly pulled out and somewhat related to uh, Skull's video of tentacle monsters. A Grick. How many people actually know what a Grick is? I'm not sure. It's not something that comes up very often. I happen to know of it. I thought it was a cool monster. I've used it a couple times. Shows up in the Forge of Fury module, another module I like. And... Honestly, it doesn't look all that terrifying. It's kind of a giant snake thing. It's not about that big around. It rears up. It coils up itself. It's got a big uh, beak, kind of like a kraken. And then it's got four tentacles around its head where it grabs people and then drags them in so it can smack them repeatedly with its beak while it rips you apart. Okay. That doesn't sound terrifying, right? It's not that bad. Have you watched the movie Anaconda? Kind of what's going on here, except now the anaconda has tentacles and a beak. Oh, and is resistant to most weapons. Yeah, they have a very rubbery, dry hide. They have a very rubbery hide. So, killing them is a pain in the rear end. 
they're, they're, they hit a bit above their weight class. They hit harder than one would expect because they don't die. Now, that's not bad, right? It's like, oh, that can't be all. It's like, all right, that's kind of crappy, right? But things, you know, it's tentacles. But dragons. We all like dragons, right? Okay, in D&D, an ancient worm red dragon is, oh, I don't know, 60 feet tall? It's huge! What are you going to do to this thing? The only reason you can hurt it is because of game mechanics. If we're being realistic, which this is a point to give Savage Worlds, you can't really do crap to it in Savage Worlds unless you have, like, a heavy weapon, like a ballista or a leather large weapon. Makes perfect sense, actually. You need a big gun. Or magic. Magic works, too. It's terrifying, is what this is. Going back to the Grick, of course, it's an ambush predator. Now imagine watching... Now I remember you imagine... Because dragons aren't really ambush predators. Unless it's a white dragon. White dragons are slashers. Okay? Think of a slasher killer, make it a dragon, and you have a white dragon. I'll let that sink in. While I go off on this other rant. Gricks are ambush predators. Come out of rocks. They can fit in holes significantly smaller than one would expect. And they'll rush out, grab your teammate, drag them partially into cover as they proceed to hold them out here, and then bungee cord them their head into your teammate's chest, killing them. Imagine how horrifying that is to watch. The reason this doesn't see come off as horrifying generally is because we're playing games so or we're disconnected from it. But even if you see something like that in a movie, it's all the tone. It's never presented as this horrible thing to watch. Sturges. Anyone know what a sturge is? A sturge is a giant mosquito. It's a giant hell mosquito, okay? It's why I hate the giant mosquitoes in Fallout 4. They scare the crap out of me. I hate blood bugs. A sturge's got about, about uh, yay big, wingspan about yay, and a proboscis about that long. Who has seen Jumanji? Who was creeped out by that scene? I was. I hated the giant mosquitoes in Jumanji, alright? That's what you're dealing with. That is a sturge. A sturge is a giant hell wasp. Yeah, it's a Satan mosquito. I think it's from the abyss. Whatever, it's a fiendish mosquito, all right? It sucks. Zombies. We joke about zombies. Zombies are scary. Yeah, well, I don't know. Uh, I, I watch zombie movies. I love zombie movies, okay? But I watch someone get ripped apart by it. That's horrifying. Because it's brutal and gruesome. It's a horrible, horrible way to die. Trolls, same reason. Horrible way to die. They are going to eat you. Ogres, probably going to eat you. Orcs. Orcs are effectively the distillation of all that is bad in humanity. That's kind of what an orc is supposed to be, right? And I'm going to be honest here, even normal D&D, because you're probably all going, wow, this is all just dark fantasy, right? Like, just don't play in the Witcher universe or other stuff. Vanilla D&D has these connotations. They just turn off word about it. Half orcs. Okay? Something we don't talk about, right? You don't go into it. I mean, I've played half orcs that are actually from a loving relationship. Right? I've done that. Um, I've got half-orcs that are the children of half-orcs, who are themselves the children of half-orcs, okay? It's a... I don't think I've ever actually played a half-orc whose mother was raped by an orc. Honestly. You're probably going, well, I haven't either. Well, if you haven't thought of your character's backstory, like your own family or anything, that's probably what happened. They don't specifically say it. They don't, like, say rape but they say they're from unwilling pregnancies. They're trying to soften it a little. That's in the book, okay? They don't go into super overt details because they don't want to scare people away from the game, but that is what happened. Orcs would rape and pillage, okay? We generally remember the pillaging part, but we don't want to do the rape part because it makes people uncomfortable, and that's fair, okay? But let's please remember that in an actual realistic fantasy world, that is what orcs do. Okay? If orcs are as written in the 3.5 Monster Manual, a percentage of them, because not all, they're not all evil, they're not always evil, they're usually evil. Which means eh, about 60% of them are evil. The rest of them are, well, 60% of them are neutral evil, if I remember correctly, or is it chaotic evil? It's chaotic evil. So that means the rest of the percentages are chaotic neutral, true neutral, or neutral evil. Typically, chaotic neutral and neutral evil will be the two big ones with the random neutral, because kind of everybody can be neutral unless you're actually playing early line, but that's a DD discussion. Basically, being an adventurer sucks because you run into that kind of crap. Orcs will rape people. Goblins are like fighting the Viet Cong, because every time you go out adventuring, it's like you went out, you're like an American soldier who went out patrol in Vietnam. That's what you're dealing with in a dungeon. 
traps that are covered in feces and horrible poisons. Um, horrible monsters that want to eat your soul, possibly literally. It sucks! It's terrible! So every time there's an adventure story, we roll our eyes when the parents say, Don't go out there, it's dangerous. They're not lying! There's a great joke about D&D where druids don't exist to protect nature, they exist to protect civilization from nature because nature doesn't need their protection. They're not wrong. Have you seen a shambling mound? That thing is basically unkillable by people levels 1 to 2. Maybe even 3 in there. Because it doesn't care. Oh, you're attacking me. Well, I don't care. I'm just going to hit myself with a bolt of lightning and I healed myself. Whee! Honestly, what are you going to do to them? A bear will just mow its way through an entire town. This isn't even counting the fact you get a druid that goes nuts and then just mind controls animals and just sends swarms of squirrels at people. That sounds hilarious until you actually think about the connotations of what happens about what a squirrel has to do to kill somebody. That's death by a thousand claw marks. Okay? So kind of my whole long, very long winded, oh my god, it's like half an hour-ish, possibly still going. It, being an adventurer is terrible. I'm just kind of giving you all these examples. Alright, you have to deal with possibly being raped by absolutely horrible monsters. This goes whether you're a dude or a girl, okay? I don't think a demon cares what it's going to rape, to be entirely honest with you. Just throw that one out there for your own horrible minds. Uh, you may go mad. Get some Call of Cthulhu stuff on there. That's what gibbering mowlers do. They try to drive you insane, same with Ellipse, and other horrible monsters that try to drain your mind. Uh, you may be poisoned and become crippled and feeble. They just become crippled in general from all this crap. Uh, you could die in a long list of innumerably horrible ways. And at the end of it, you're not even guaranteed to get riches. Okay? Let's, let's be honest here. What You have no guarantee you're going to be rich. And that's why it's high risk, high reward. Yeah, well... I wouldn't even say it's high reward. It's high risk, medium reward. You want to go take out a dragon to get its horde? Good luck with that. You're going to have to go through a cobalt warren, possibly. And if you have to go through a cobalt warren, you've just walked through Vietnam. Okay? That's all I can think of. You've just walked through Vietnam. There'll be traps everywhere. They're sneaky. They're devious. They know what they're doing. They're actually smarter than goblins. Okay? They're crafty, they're crafty little guys. Goblins? Same thing. I, I don't see any reason why goblins wouldn't have basic traps. Maybe not as fancy as the kobolds, but large branches with sharp spikes on them hitting you in right in the thigh. Possibly poisoned. There you go. Getting shot from the darkness as they run through holes that are that big because they're only three feet tall. Have fun with that. Have fun fighting in small rooms. Have fun fighting in tunnels where you can't get halt taller than this and the only one comfortable is the dwarf. Go into an ancient tomb, get cursed, and then have a mummy kill you. Go into a vampire's castle, be turned into one of his slaves. Frankly, a fantasy world would probably look closer to Ravenloft or The Witcher than it would to the Inheritance Cycle. And honestly, the Inheritance Cycle isn't all that pleasant either. There's all sorts of horrible crap out there. Now, how often does that show up? Eh, not as often. But the point stands. Being an adventurer is horrible. You are risking your soul, your physical integrity, and your mind for the possible, possible reward of a bunch of money. This is probably why most adventurers only go on one or two adventures, make enough money to live out for 20 or 30 years comfortably, and then never do it again. Because the risk is far too high that you're going to be dragged off to some goblin's lair and used as a toy. Because that's what happens to, I would say, 80 plus percent of all adventurers who aren't the main characters. Gotta remember that. This is a literary thing. This is a real world. You don't have great odds. So if you ever get sucked into a fantasy world, go open a bar. Go... Let the adventurers come back and spend money on the nice food you've made and the beer you serve and the atmosphere you make. Don't go grab a sword. Which, by the way, don't use a sword if you're an adventurer, for God's sake. Get an axe or a spear. 
Okay? Get like a get, get like a, a gladius if you're going into a cave or something. Get a giant shield. Get the best stuff you can get. Don't skimp on anything. But if you get sucked in there, go beat the go beat the barkeep. Don't be an adventurer because you're probably not gonna come back. That being said, I'm probably not gonna do another video of this type. It's A, long-winded as hell, and B, kind of depressing. All right, I don't want to talk about the depressing sides of being an adventurer. I want to talk about the fun parts of being an adventurer. But I felt this needed to be addressed because I haven't seen anyone really address it. And I'm not even talking about the crappy food and the bad beds. I'm talking about permanent damage to yourself and your psyche. And possibly a German soul. So, yeah. Now, uh, again, if you've gotten all the way through this, I don't blame you if you haven't, guys. It's fine. Uh... Leave a like on it, or a dislike if I went too long, whatever, it's fine. Uh, drop a comment below, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Peace out, guys. I'll return us to our regularly scheduled programming of goofing around and just having fun. Have a great October.